morning, welcome back class. Today we are working on lesson four of book three and we're gonna be talking about the number line and how to read a thermometer today. So my boys and I have just finished doing our power up. Remember if you are working on Saxon Math at home, that power up is a really important piece to the curriculum. It helps to review skills and it also helps um, kind of set the tone for multiplication which we're going to be starting in a couple of weeks here. So to start today, the number line. I have a number line up here on the board. Now there's a, there's a few things I want you to notice about the number line. One of my students just said it counts by fives. Sort of. I only labeled the fives. But a number line counts all the numbers in order. I just didn't label them because really I would run out of space here if I tried to put a number. And a lot of books do that as well. When you're reading a number line, they will only label maybe every two, maybe every five or 10 or 20 even. But there will be a notch for each number. So this is zero. Oop, dropping my marker here. This is zero. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and so on. The whole way up the number line, okay? Now, there's something I want you to notice about this. Humans sometimes make errors. I didn't use a ruler, so it might not be perfect, but all of these spaces are a approximately the same distance apart. All my notches are the same. This is an accurate number line. If I made a number line like this, and I said one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that would not be an accurate number line because look, my distance between one and two is so much bigger than say the distance between three and four. When you're, making, when you're making a number line, you wanna make sure that you put all of your numbers about the same distance apart. Okay, so we're gonna get rid of this one that's not right. And we're just gonna use my accurate number line here and we're gonna practice. Okay, I'm gonna put a point up on this number line and I want my boys here and you guys at home to tell me what number does that point represent? So if I put a point right there, Riker, can you tell me what number that is? 12. He said that's 12. Do you agree with him at home? Do you agree with him? C. Yes, that's correct. That is 12. Gabriel, your turn next. Okay. You're going to tell me what that dot or point is. It's before. I just know it's before. It is before 30. So what would it be? 29. It would be 29. Did yeah. you get that one at home? So each of these notches has a value and we just count in order by ones. Please don't interrupt my lesson. Even though I only labeled them by fives. But every number is represented up here. So something that you might see in your book is they might give you a number line. Let's fix mine because I messed up some of the points there. They might give you a number line and they might do A there and then B there and then C and let's say D. You might see a problem like this. What it is asking you to do is, what number does point A stand for? Two. One, two. You got it. So A is two. What number does point B stand for? Fourteen. Okay, right here, your turn. What number does point C stand for? Twenty-one. And what number does point D? And you guys are quick. Okay, I, I so if, if they put numbers there on the number line, that's what we're looking for. What value do those numbers stand for? All right, 
So there's something else that you might see. And this is really tricky. What is it? A whole different number line. So I have zero here. So I have this number line, and then they might ask, what is that point? Nine. That's exactly what I expected you to say, because that's how the book is tricking us. He said nine, because he looked at it and went, it's just one notch before ten, it must be nine. But if that's nine, look at how our number line must be. We have zero here. So are we counting by ones? Do we say one? Two, three, four, ten? Nope. No, we don't say that. So we look at that and we go, wait, there's not enough notches up there for that to be nine, or even there's not enough notches between zero and ten. Yeah. That is a clue that your number line is counting by more than ones. So looking at this, I'm going to go and say, I bet we're counting by twos. Or sometimes number lines will even count by fives, okay? But in this case, I would say to myself, two, four, six, eight, ten, yeah, that works. And if I really wanted to check it, I might continue and say 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30. Yeah, we're counting by twos here. So knowing that we're counting by twos, Riker, what is this value? What is this one, the brown dot? Um, eight. It is an eight. Because eight mm -hmm. is what we say before we say 10 if we're counting by twos. Thank you. Okay, so that brings us to thermometers. Thermometers almost never. I'm gonna go ahead and say never because I've never seen a thermometer where every single number has its own notch because thermometers usually aren't really big. They're usually kind of small. People might carry them around. Um, so thermometers, you always have to figure out what's the scale? What is this thermometer counting by? So for my first thermometer here, we're gonna talk about this F and C in just a minute. But on the F side, I have 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 labeled. But do I have 10 spaces here in between the 50 and the 60? No. Can no. I do 51, 52, 53, 54, 60? Nope. No. So what should I try to count by to figure it out? Uh, should I try counting by fives? No. 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, and then I go back to 60 again? No. No. Counting by fives isn't going to work. What should I try? Four. Count by four. 54, 58, 62, 66, 60? No. No, that didn't work either. Oh, three. Count by three? Yes. 53, 56, okay. 59, 62, 60? No. You guys are working really hard. What did we just count by up here? We counted by two. Two, 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 two. Yeah, that's usually going to be my first guess. If it's not counting by ones, I'm going to move on and say we're probably counting by twos. So let's check. 50, count with me. 52, 54, 56, 58, 60. Did that one work? Yes. Yeah. So we know that this side, we are counting by twos. Okay, so then there's this side. I don't even have any notches in between those. So I know that I'm counting by 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. One. Am I counting by one? No, five. Five. Here, we're counting by fives. Count by five. Okay? All right. So if I want to know what temperature it is, we got a color in our mercury here. Let's say right there. 
we have to look, and now I'm, I'm just going to talk about the F side here for a minute. We're going to look over here and say, well, it's on this notch right there. And so it's somewhere between 50 and 60. And what am I counting by? Two. I'm counting by two. two. So let's count up. We've got 50, 52, 54, 56. So this would be 56 degrees. That's hot. That means mm, not terribly, not in Fahrenheit. We'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. All right, I'm going to color it in a little bit more. What if? Oh. Okay, so right now, and I hope, I don't know how well you'll be able to see this on the camera. Right now, in fact, let me, I'll draw a little, we'll pretend this is a magnifying glass so I can make it bigger for you. Okay, here we go. And I have a notch right here and a notch right here. And my mercury is colored in to halfway in between those two notches. Okay, so it's somewhere in between 60 and 70, right? Um, we're so we're going to count, yep, 60, 62, 60. 64, 65, 66. So we know that this notch here is 66 degrees, and this notch here is 68 degrees, but my mercury is halfway in the middle. What do you think that means? It's in the middle between 64. No. It's in between 66 and 68. It's in between 66 and 68. So what number do we know that's in between 66 and 68? Um, oh, 67. 67. So this would be 67 degrees because it's in between the two notches and we're counting by twos. Okay? All right. So if you were in my class in person, right now would be the point in the year that I introduced the map dictionary. If you are at home doing this, throughout the year we're going to have some math facts, some life facts that are kind of mathematical, or some definitions that it's just better to write down. Kids learn and remember the things that they write down more than just the things that they're told. So this will be the first entry in your math dictionary. You have a couple of choices. You can have just like a spiral bound notebook that you got from the store that you decide is gonna be your math dictionary. You can take some printer paper and staple it together and decide that's gonna be your math dictionary. My boys are just gonna be using regular notebook paper and then we'll put it in their three ring binder and they'll have a divider for their math dictionary section. Okay? so. Right now is the time that you would pause the video and put this information here into your math notebook. So before you hit pause, let's just talk about it a little bit. This is a big long word. Can either of you tell me what that word says? Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit, you've done temperature before, so you kind of had an idea, right? This is Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit is how we measure temperature in the United States of America. We use the system Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit. Pretty much everywhere else, they measure temperature using this word, which is Celsius. And that's why down here on my little thermometers, we have a degrees F and a degrees C. The F stands for Fahrenheit and the C stands for Celsius, okay? You'll see that when we do some practice problems in a few minutes. This thermometer here is reading Fahrenheit temperatures. This thermometer here is reading Celsius temperatures. For Saxon Math Book 3, you're gonna need to know a little bit of both, starting with these facts. You will have this question on future tests coming up soon. You will need to know that water freezes at zero degrees Celsius yeah. or 32 degrees Fahrenheit. It's gets hot. Now, let me explain something to you. Water does not freeze at more than one temperature. It's the same coldness. 
It's just how we measure it. On the Celsius scale, water freezes at zero. And if it's colder than that, we start talking negative numbers on the Celsius scale. On the Fahrenheit scale, water freezes at 32 degrees. So if it's 15 degrees outside, you better go check on your chickens because their water's probably frozen, okay? If it's zero degrees outside Fahrenheit or Celsius, something is freezing outside, you better make sure that your outside animals are okay. So, same temperature, two different scales, two different ways of reading it. The same thing works here for water boiling. On the Celsius scale, water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. On the Fahrenheit scale, it's 212 degrees Fahrenheit. So, if you're helping mom make a pot of spaghetti and you put water on the stove to boil, when you start seeing those bubbles come up, pop, 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 step away, because it's super duper hot. It's 212 degrees. I'm gonna give you a little something to compare to. When you come to school and you get your temperature taken because we're trying to make sure everybody's healthy and able to be around each other so that we don't get sick from each other. Your temperature should read somewhere close to 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. That is a normal temperature. If you have like 97.6 or even if you're up to like 99.0, that's all within the normal range. But this is the temperature of our body almost 100 degrees, not quite. If your temperature's at 100 degrees Fahrenheit, then you probably are fighting something off and you're a little bit sick. But look how hot it has to be to boil. That's why the huge difference here between boiling water and the temperature of your body, that's why if some boiling water splashes on you, it hurts and you probably turn red because it's burning your skin a little bit. Okay, it's super duper hot. Celsius, your body temperature is right around 37 degrees. Wow. So me right now, I'm healthy. I don't have a fever, I'm about 98.6 or 37 degrees Celsius, okay? So people like, people like temperature to be a little cooler than we are. If it's 98 degrees outside, like it probably is going to be today because it's a warm August day. If it's 98 degrees outside, we walk outside and go, oh, I'm melting. I need some water. It's so hot. Even though my body is 98 degrees, it feels hot to be outside in a 98 degree temperature. People like, like, depending on the person, maybe 60 degrees, which is a little cool for me. I like it warmer. I like it to be about 75, 80 degrees outside. But that's still cooler than my own body temperature. A hot summer day will be right around my body temperature, even a little lower than that. Like 80 to 100 degrees is a hot summer day. A nice, cool spring day is going to be about 65 to 70 degrees. I'm not answering questions right now. You guys need to wait, okay? All right. So last thing, like I said, if you would like to pause the video, make sure you get this in your map dictionary. That's a great first start. And then we're going to move on with some practice with our thermometers. So. Let me get rid of a little bit of this so that it's not so distracting. I have two thermometers here. I have a Fahrenheit thermometer and a Celsius thermometer. We're gonna start with Fahrenheit. And let's see, I am going to ask Riker, what is the temperature of my thermometer here. He said it's 52 degrees. How did you know? And I'm going to zoom in here so that 
you guys at home can see it a little better. There we go. thermometers go up by two he said well let's see does this one go up by two from 40 do we say 42 44 46 48 50 uh oh did this one go up by two no it didn't it only went up by what one? it's only going up by one so you want to try again and see if you can tell me what the temperature is? It is 51 degrees Celsius or Fahrenheit? 51 degrees Fahrenheit. Once again, you can tell that by the little letter that's at the bottom of the thermometer there. Okay? Gabriel, I'm going to give you one. Same thermometer. We're just going to make it a little bit warmer all the way up to there. No, I zoomed in. It is between 55 and 60, he said. So exactly what is it? Here's 55. 58 elephants? We say 58 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit. You got it. Okay, now we're going to read this one. Pay attention because they're not labeled the same. Okay, right here back to. Actually, I'm going to have Gabriel go first on this one. Oh, no, it's colder. It is. It's very cold. Mm. What temperature do you think it is here? Counting by ones? Do I go one, two, three, four, five, ten? No. No. So what am I counting by here? Hmm. Am I counting by fives? No. Zero. Five, ten, no, fifteen. Um, it's going by twos. It's counting by twos. So count by twos. Ready? Two. For six degrees Celsius. Okay, Riker, your turn. We'll make it a little bit warmer here. Let's do there. How is Actually, it nope. Let's do there. How is Try to trick you. What do you think it is? Here's 20. So then we have what? What's that? 23. Right. The answer would be 23. 23 what? Celsius. 23 Celsius? You're degrees. missing a word. 23 degrees. degrees. This little circle here stands for degrees. Degrees Celsius. I like how you noticed that my mercury went up to halfway in between the 22 and the 24, and that's how you knew it was 23. 